the power of exercise. In what was a landmark study involving over 3,000 at-risk adults, lifestyle changes including regular physical activity and weight loss proved remarkably effective in preventing the onset of type 2 diabetes. Participants committed to at least 150 minutes of exercise per week and aimed for a 7% weight loss. After nearly three years, exercise and weight loss slashed the incidence of diabetes by astonishingly 58%, outperforming the prescription drug metformin, which reduced cases by 31%. And this just isn't slightly better. It's a statistical and biological landslide in favor of exercise and weight loss over one of the most commonly prescribed medications in the United States. The findings underscore the profound impact of lifestyle choices, emphasizing that exercise and healthy living can serve as a potent antidote to one of America's most prevalent chronic diseases. In short, when it comes to combating type 2 diabetes, sustained exercise and weight loss don't just help, they can even outclass medication. If you want to start exercising, you have options. You can try running or cycling at moderate intensity for 150 minutes per week, just meeting the guidelines. But if you're pressed for time, high intensity interval training or HIT offers an efficient way to achieve great results in less time. Listen as recent podcast guest, Dr. Martin Gabala, talks about how HIT induced the kind of changes that are so significant individuals with type 2 diabetes had to reduce their medication. One of the reasons why um, exercise is uh, therapeutic in the treatment of high blood pr- high blood sugar or diabetes, you know, there's lots of reasons, but one of the reasons is you increase glucose transport capacity on the cell membrane. And so what that means is it allows more glucose to be moved into the muscle, maybe then stored as muscle glycogen, and that helps to lower Uh, the blood sugar levels, especially if they're chronically high. And so individuals who start and engage in an exercise program, one of the things that they'll find if they are diabetic is they have to reduce their diabetic medication because what's happening is the muscle's more fit and rather than needing the drug to try and clear the glucose, your muscle's doing it more naturally, if you will, or it's grown these new glucose transporters that helps to clear the glucose, the elevated glucose That's from amazing. the bloodstream. What, how does the, um, the difference in increasing the glucose transporters or GLUT4 transporters on the muscle differ when you're doing that high intensity exercise versus more moderate? Yeah. So for, again, I, I, I think for a lot of these responses that we might talk about in, in, in muscle, that there is evidence to so show that certainly high intensity exercise can cause changes in these GLUT4 uh, transporters. We've shown that, including in people with uh, type 2 diabetes. But there's just not the body of evidence that we would like to see to definitively say one is better than the other. You know, we've done a number of studies showing that at least over the short term, uh, more vigorous exercise can elicit superior improvements in in some of these markers. But again, the valid criticism is these are relatively short-term studies. They're not always appropriately powered. Many of these, especially our early studies, were what we like to think of as proof of concept or or pilot studies, you know, do these things work? And, you know, writ large, we really need these randomized clinical trials to properly investigate all of these, these questions. What about insulin sensitivity? Is that also, I mean, so there's, like you, you get this glucose transport. I mean, that's another, I mean, that's one way of glucose regulation and certainly um, repeated, I mean, a- acute bouts of exercise are probably, I mean, you're t- talking even throughout the day, that would be so beneficial, but also like people are, you know, insulin resistant Correct. too. Um, how does, how does hit affect? Yeah. That? So there's, there's uh, various ways to measure insulin sensitivity, but, uh, you know, generally exercise increases insulin sensitivity. There are some systematic reviews and meta analyses that have, uh, suggested that maybe more high intensity, vigorous effort, uh, can lead to some greater improvements in markers of insulin sensitivity. But again, even though, you know, we think of, oh, systematic reviews, meta analyses, those are really definitive evidence, but many of the underlying studies tend to be relatively small, tend to be relatively low numbers of participants, all of the potential bias, you know, not that researchers are purposely trying to bias their results, but they don't always include all of the proper uh, controls from a research design standpoint that you might like to see. So sometimes the underlying evidence is is limited as well, which limits the 
the veracity of of the systematic uh, reviews and meta analyses. But certainly, there are there is some evidence to suggest that uh, bigger intensity, more intense exercise may lead to uh, some some superior benefits there. You know, just I'm sure we might hit on it later, but. This idea of multiple bouts through the day, one of the things that we and some others are looking at right now are what we termed exercise snacks. So these brief bouts of vigorous intensity exercise that are spread throughout the day, uh, and we're running right now two randomized controlled studies at you know our lab in the University of British Columbia, my colleague, uh, Professor John Little, and one of the main outcomes is measures of uh, insulin sensitivity or blood glucose. Uh, control in groups that are doing these very short one minute bursts of vigorous effort spread uh, throughout the day to try and get at exactly this question. How many times a day? So we're encouraging people to do at least four or five times a day of those snacks. So, you know, we define an exercise snack as less than or equal to one minute of vigorous intensity exercise. Uh, It could be jumping on a stationary bike. It could be a series of air squats or body weight style exercise. And we're delivering in the intervention, we've partnered with a, um, a, a company that's uh, delivering prompts on people's cell phones. And so they basically get a prompt that says, hey, it's time for your exercise snack. Uh, that links to a little YouTube video that shows the individual what they should do. Uh, and we're encouraging them to do that uh, four or five times a day, more is better. Uh, and we're following them for, uh, for three months, uh, 12 week intervention. And we're comparing it to, uh, a a movement snacks control group. So a group that's getting a very similar intervention, but they're not engaging in vigorous intensity exercise. So it's more stretching mobility exercise. And so the key variable that's changing there is the intensity of the movements. And we're seeing, you know, how do people adhere to that? Like, will people even do that? And if they do it, is it enough to move the needle uh, in terms of things like cardiorespiratory fitness, um, blood markers of fat, immune function, glucose, uh, and measures of insulin sensitivity as well. One of the studies that we're doing is going to be using uh, continuous glucose monitoring uh, in individuals with type 2 diabetes. 